Hey, what's everybody? Brent from Brent Speed. Something different today. Today I'm going to talk about the variables of the dyno. I've been having a large amount of you email in or leave comments lately and ask, hey, why are my dyno numbers what they are? Maybe they're high. Maybe you think they're low. So I thought, you know what? Let's make a video about all the variables I can think of on the dyno because there's lots of dynos there's lots of things that can change those numbers and i know a lot of the tuners out there get frustrated with these type of questions because they understand what's going on you know i understand what's going on but a lot of you do not understand what's going on so that's what today's video is about we're in our dyno cell here at brand speed i'm going to bring up a bunch of graphs so hey, if you haven't please subscribe and notify us up to date to watch a lot of dyno videos and a lot of cool shop tours and different type of information I'm going to give you. But today it's about why are my numbers what they are? And normally there's not a really good answer if you don't have any information. But the variables I think I show you today will let you understand why maybe they are what they are. So I have Doug with me today. We're going to go over, we're going to look at it, several different graphs. I'm trying not to make this video super long. So I'm going to do a lot of cuts in it so you're not like sitting there watching me bring up different graphs. We're gonna talk about things like, you know, dyno in the wrong gear, shitty octane fuel, or maybe good octane fuel. How high RPM are you gonna go? What kind of dyno are you on? I mean, there's so many different things that play a role in your dyno number. But again, I'm Brent from Brent Speed. I've been doing this for a long, long time. So I hope you appreciate this video. It doesn't matter if you have a GM Chrysler, an Audi, Pretty much everything is going to hold true, but today we're going to show you some Mustang graphs, so let's go check it out. Okay, first I want to explain a couple things. We're going to talk correction factors. We're going to talk types of dynos. We are going to talk dyno in the wrong gear, which is super important. Now, so first, we use a dyno jet here at Brand Speed. There's lots of different brands on the market. I prefer dyno jet. We use dyno jet. We always do our rating in SAE when you watch our videos. I'm going to talk about that. There's other dynos out there called Mustang Dyno. And there's other brands out there. I think one's called, Doug, what were you telling me earlier? It's Power Dyno. Power Dyno. Power Dyno, maybe. Or I've seen Hub Dynos. I mean, there's so many dynos out there, but you know, they're all not equal. So you watch most videos. You watch a lot of companies and different people out there using dynos. DynoJet is the industry standard. And that's what we have here at Brent Speed. But there are other brands out there and they are gonna read different numbers. So when you get on a forum and you're like, hey, you made this, you made this. Not only has all the information I'm gonna tell you in this video play a role in that, but just in general, the type of dyno, they don't read exactly the same. We're talking rear wheel. We're not talking flywheel horsepower. So another question that a lot of you ask me is, hey, my car's rated at this or whatever. Why do it only make this at the wheels? Dynos on the chassis dyno is rear wheel horsepower after let's say the 15% drivetrain loss That's what you're putting down to the ground. That's not what's at the flywheel That's not when you go buy a car from Ford and Ford says hey, this is 460 horsepower. That's flywheel That's not rear wheel. So get the flywheel out of your head. We're talking rear wheel dynos today We're talking dyno jet which we'll use here at Brand Speed, but there's other brands of dynos out there that never read the same Duck, come over here to take a look. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the wrong gear. So see this particular vehicle, 642 real wheel horse. See that 671 right there? Well, hey, look at the torque, 473, 509. So you got two buddies, same mods. Maybe you're not even from around each other. You're on the forums talking. You're like, man, my car made 671. My car made 642. Those are two back-to-back -back poles. One of them is in the wrong gear. So when you dyno a car, you create your best number in what's called the one-to-one. -one. This is very confusing, surprisingly, to a lot of dyno shops when the newer Mustangs came out because they're always thinking fourth gear is the one-to-one -one and it's not. So in this particular dyno right here, one-to-one -one is where you want to get the best measurement. 671 is your one-to-one -one gear. Then we dropped down to a lower gear and made another pull. 642 is what it records. Now, you know what? As far as tuning a car, it really doesn't matter. Like when I tune a car or anyone else, you're looking at information on your laptop. You're looking at fueling, you're looking at timing. And honestly, we don't really care what numbers are. Anyone that tunes a car 
is just trying to make that number go higher based off the number and they're not using the information wrong tuner that's not how you do it and the number is as i say it is what it is and that's what we call a dyno a heartbreaker i call it the heartbreaker because a lot of you guys are like oh i wanted this well you know what sometimes it's not but you tune a car and the numbers come out the way you want it and then the number is what it is but this is an example of the wrong gear so you know in 2011 you're correct the manual transmission gear in a mustang is fifth i get a lot of people that say they dyno my car in fourth well that's not your correct one-to-one -one gear you can totally dyno a car in that you can tune a car in that it's no big deal but your number is not going to be as high as if you dyno it in the one-to-one -one. and this is an example of a difference of 671 versus 642 exact same car two poles like three minutes apart two different gears pretty big difference so don't get upset on your number if you're dyno in the wrong gear because your number is probably correct for that gear but it's not your one-to-one -one. so the next thing i want to talk about is correction factor so doug we dyno everything in sae right that's right we love sae that's what we're down on cars in but we also have other correction factors you will watch a lot of youtube videos of someone making you know whatever power and their correction factor is standard hey nothing wrong with that You're using standard but i want to take these two graphs doug look, one more look 642 that's the wrong gear one 671 that's the correct gear but watch what happens when i change this right here from sae over to standard so boom i'm going to change the standard look now 658 688 oh my god my numbers are higher praise the lord my numbers are higher well it's just a correction factor of standard all right so that's something i want you all to understand that's one of the you know things that play a role in your dyno number we went from lower to higher just by changing that one little button it's just a different correction factor no big deal we're going to talk about a lot of things today a lot of different things that play a role in your dyno number i think the next thing i want to talk about is rpm so i'm going to take a little cut right here i'm going to change the graph and let's check out what happens when a dyno shop brings your car up to different rpm now that affects your numbers all right next on the list variables of the dyno we're going to talk rpm it doesn't matter pretty much what type of vehicle we're talking about but there's always different rpms you watch you know maybe a youtube video you watch a dyno graph you got a guy telling me i made this i made this let me show you the difference between rpm and how it plays a role so how dyno graphs work dyno show you peak horsepower that's what this is right here all this says is peak this particular car made 466 6200 all right awesome well over here i'm at 6000 rpm and this car makes 445 so let's just say a shop makes a dyno pull they take it up to 6000 rpm you make 445 cool all right no problem with that but now they're going to take it up to just a little bit higher 6200 doug look at this watch this so i'm at 40 445 right here i'm just going to go up a little bit higher click on this right here why oh there we go 465 so i'm at 62 270 car made 465 real world horsepower so you might have the mentality like god man i picked up 20 real world horsepower or maybe my buddy made 20 more than me or you know whatever maybe you made 20 more than them rpm can play a big role doesn't matter if it's a coyote mustang or any of your vehicle or a camaro it doesn't matter a lot of times unless the graph's going flat and it's not climbing anymore if the graph wants to continue to climb you're going to have a larger real -world horsepower the higher rpm you go so you got to look at how high rpm did we go why is my power this well maybe it's based off the rpm you went maybe they could have went higher so that's a cool thing right there we're talking rpm plays a huge role naturally aspirated it'll typically fall off at blower cars that's typically going to keep climbing especially with centrifugal so the next thing we're going to talk about is octane fuel which plays a huge role so check out these dyno graphs all right next like i said we're going to talk about octane which plays a huge role in your dyno numbers 
But something I want to mention, which I'm not going to show you a graph, but auto versus manual. You know, a lot of you don't understand. An automatic typically makes less real horsepower than a manual, more drivetrain loss. So remember, you have however much power your engine's making, and that has to go through the drivetrain, and then the dyno reads the real horsepower, but an auto has a higher drivetrain loss than a manual transmission. So when you watch a video and you see it and you're like, hey, my car makes more, maybe my car makes less. Auto or manual also plays a role. Auto is typically a higher drivetrain loss. Even though the engine's the same power, I'm talking measuring at the dyno, auto wouldn't typically read less than a manual. But Doug, take a look. So I wanna talk about octane. I brought up a graph, 425 and 466. And what we have here is an octane problem. So a lot of you out there have different type octane fuels. You know, maybe it's like we like 91, 92, 93. Maybe you run race fuel. A lot of you run 85. But this is an example of a vehicle that you would see with some not good octane. We've had a lot of cars come in with literally like three, four month old 93. The car is in storage and do something like the 425, pump that out, put in fresh out of the pump, 93, and pick up that kind of real horsepower right there. Another thing you can do to try to solve the bad octane problem, and I don't mean bad octane like you have good 91. I mean like your 91 is literally like 87 or 88 octane. You can add some boostane, something like that to it, and that will help get your octane up. And I don't mean add enough to make it like 100, I mean, just try to get it back on the level of 91. And this is the type of power you'll see. One more look here, Doug. 425 to 466. This would be an example of a vehicle, and I haven't done lots and lots of cars like this. You actually see it a lot more on Coyotes than this graph right here. But I just want to show you like the difference that you might see in Octane. Bad fuel versus the correct fuel. I don't mean bad fuel versus race fuel. I mean bad fuel versus the proper fuel your calibrations for. That's the difference you see. So your engine, if you have an 05 newer Mustang, you have knock sensors. They're honestly way better on a Coyote Mustang. But they're gonna pull out timing if it doesn't like the fuel. They might not do anything if they like the fuel, or they might add if they really like the fuel. So fuel is a huge thing. I don't mean, I, I'm saying stay away from generic fuel. You're looking for the cheapest gas out there. I suggest staying away from it. Run the best fuel you can get because your engine will make more power. And hey, Doug, another thing about this is IAT temps. This is a good example, even though this is more like an octane graph right here. But what do IATs do? Hey, my car made this power one day. My car made this power one day. Intake air temps on a supercharged car. Same for naturally aspirated, but not so much on a naturally aspirated car. You're not gonna see that big a difference. The higher intake air temps get, the lower your power is gonna be because it's not gonna run the timing. So if you drive an hour to a dyno, they pull it right in and it's pretty warm out. You strap it down, you make a pull. You're probably not gonna make the same power as if that car was cooled down a little bit because it's gonna read hot intake temps and it's just simply, on purpose, going to run a little less timing. And that's why a lot of people try to do this before and after. Hey, I added cams or I did whatever. Well, I died on my car this day. Man, it was 40 degrees outside. I died on my car this way. And I added cams. It's 105. Well, you got to take in consideration the IATs because you're probably not letting it run the amount of timing it was running before. So you got to do all that math. So, hey, I'm Brent from Brent Speech talking a lot about dyno variables right here. And I hope this makes sense to a lot of you, but there are so many variables when you email in or you leave a comment on YouTube. And hey, and I love the comments. I have hundreds of videos and I see a lot of comments about dyno numbers. And I don't mean cars we built. I just mean, hey, I bought a car. It made this. And you're like, why is my numbers this? They're good. They're bad. Well, it's literally impossible to answer because of all these variables. So I thought this video might help you out. I hope you liked watching it. Please subscribe and notify us if today. Watch a ton of cool dyno videos. Coyote swaps, all kinds of shop tours, everything. I'm Brent. Thanks for watching.